Welcome. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and we are delighted that you have tuned us in and welcomed us into your home. You're an important part of our EWTN family, and we would love to hear from you during this live show. So give us a jingle at 1-800-221-9460. If you're calling and you're outside North America, you can reach us at area code 205-271-2980. And you can always send us an email, jimandjoy at EWTN.com. Well, today we bring to you a young, beautiful guest. Her name is Sarah Swafford. She is the founder of a ministry called Emotional Virtue Ministries. She's the author of a book, Emotional Virtue, a guide to drama-free relationships. Doesn't that sound wonderful? We all need it. Especially maybe after the Thanksgiving holiday where maybe a lot of emotions were running high in yeah. families and discussions and topics and you say, you know what, maybe I want to do that better when we get together at Christmas yeah. and I would like to have a great guide that will help me to be drama Free. Amen. We wouldn't know much about that. We have a lot of drama with our daughters. They're just lots of fun, well, lots of conversations. Yes, indeed. Well, we had a lot of conversations and a lot of fun during Thanksgiving. <clears throat> and we hope and pray that you had a wonderful Thanksgiving and extended weekend. And still people are making their way back home from vacation. Uh, we had about 23 people. Uh, we did. Friends and mostly family over our home for a number of days. And uh, I was just so pleased with the time. I mean, really, really was. You know, when you get that many people together, you said drama. Mm -hmm. And we had, I guess, about uh, 12 of our grandchildren mm -hmm. over. And, you know, we're a normal family. So sometimes there's a little friction or the, the kids are playing and a little fight breaks out or whatever it is, or he hit me or whatever happened. But it was very, very special time. I mean, there was a lot of beautiful conversation that took mm -hmm. place. And we really prayed about that, desired that. We always try to engage each of the people and look into their faces to seek Jesus and have some great conversations. And we played a number of games. Uh, one we developed on our own, the pumpkin game, with questions about relationships and family and what's important and different experiences and asking questions. Right. And then another one was made by a company. I won't say the name of the company, at least at this point. And, and we it, added it to <clears> the game. And we added it to our game. But there was time that we actually just sat down and you especially led that time and we did it as a whole I don't even know if we did it as a whole group maybe just smaller groups mm -hmm. and just to ask these questions I was amazed at the grandchildren's desire to participate yeah okay. well it was pretty amazing because we sat for a really long time past the pumpkin and there, it's asking you questions about yourself like what do you like about yourself what do you dislike about yourself what it what would you say is your greatest feature or who's special in the family who's special and in why. the family who's, yeah. right who's who's most patient in the family how do you act when you're angry you yeah. know um and so everybody got to and every answer was right whether you're yeah. five years old and you were isaiah or you were wesley and you were 30 yeah. you know every answer was right no you couldn't say it was a wrong answer right. but but how much they wanted to share. Yes. But you've got to make space. Yes. You have to make a place uh, away from you know, the, the phones and All smartphones and, and mm -hmm. computers. And, but I think, I think our family has learned pretty much that you know, you're not going to be doing a lot of mm -hmm. that when you come here. But I guess the thing that just struck me was how much they wanted to share. Yes. And I think it also says something about our children who are rearing these grandchildren because they really keep things in the proper perspective. They're really dedicated to the kids, to having the conversation. And the kids are like, you really want to hear from me what I think about myself, what I think about mm -hmm. this family, what I think about my other family members, what I want in the future, who I like, who my friends are. And the kids were really taking the lead. And then after they left, one of them said to their family, when are we going to play the, we want the that game. when are we going to play mm -hmm. the sharing game? Mm -hmm. Because I really want to do that. So it really is possible to have meaningful conversation and to help inculcate beautiful things. But you got to make space and, and you have to make time. Uh, but I think it really speaks to the human nature of the person. When you go there in true, genuine, holistic relationships, 
people really want to share in right. a safe environment. Well, and it was safe. I think that was the thing. There was safety. So everybody loved everybody. Mm -hmm. You were there. You knew everybody wanted the best for you. But nothing happened by accident. That was an intentional design. Yeah. Just like all the food, everything yeah. was intentional, yeah. All everything being prepared. You did a great job with the turkey and ham. 24, 26 pound turkey. You and Matt ham. took over yeah. the kitchen over the meat, which was really kind of yeah. fun, and you worked really well together. Wes, the other son, was kind of, you know, coaching you yeah. guys, and you just did a Thank great, you. great job. We have a very special guest, as Joy said earlier, Sarah Swafford, founder of Emotional Virtue Ministries. What, what's that about, the emotional virtue? Um, she has so many wonderful principles here that are so appropriate and fitting for our young people today in high school, college, but also for all of us. As Joy said, don't we all want uh, drama-free relationships? How can we further develop our inner being and our behavior so that we're secure in and of ourselves and we have the best relationships possible? Don't go away. We'll be right back. You're not going to want to miss Sarah. Don't go away. Welcome back. Well, you're an important part of our EWTN family, and we would love to hear from you. So today, if you have a question for our guest, Sarah Swafford, we want you to give us a jingle during the live broadcast at 1-800-221-9460. If you're calling and you're outside North America, you can reach us at area code 205-271-2980. You can always send us an email, jimandjoy at ewtn.com, and hopefully we'll use your question or your comment right here on the air. Well, it is my pleasure and delight to introduce you to Sarah Swafford. Now, you may have seen her on EWTN before. She's not a stranger, but she is the founder of Emotional Virtue Ministries. Doesn't that sound so needed in our day? She's the author of a great book, Emotional Virtue, a Guide to Drama-Free Relationships. Sounds too exciting for me. <laughs> and you could go to her website. It's emotionalvirtue.com. Well, Sarah, we want to welcome you to At Home, and we're thank delighted you. that you're here. We're excited you. about your book. Oh, well, thank you. I and appreciate we, you having me. It's and so we fun. think our family at home needs to hear this. Well, but yeah. before we go into the book and your beautiful ministry, first, why don't you share with our family sure. at home that a little bit about Sarah, where you were born and raised, your marriage, your children, and yeah. how you got to be where you are. Sure. Well, I feel like I am in your living room. I love your beautiful family back <laughs> there. You. I was laughing when you said you hosted 23 people. My mom's one of eight. My dad's one of five. Mm -hmm. And I hosted my mom's extended site. So we had over 45 people at my oh, house for gosh, Thanksgiving. Yes. So mm -hmm. I was just thinking about how Thanksgiving is just wow. a wonderful time to bring people mm -hmm. together. So, But I'm from the great state of Kansas. So a lot of viewers may know of Benedictine College. My, I actually was born and raised in Atchison, mm -hmm. which is where Benedictine is. So my mom and dad met there and then settled in Atchison. So I was, I've been a raven for a really long time. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, I, I was raised in Atchison. Um, I loved, I have just an amazing family and really owned my faith in college when I went to Benedictine College. So uh, that's where I would say my, my reversion, um, mm -hmm. just really taking Jesus Christ as the Lord of my life really happened there. Um, and then I got married to a fellow Raven. Uh, my husband is Andrew. Uh, we, we joke, I call him Swaff because our last mm. name is Swafford and everyone mm -hmm. calls him Swaff. Mm -hmm. So um, that's always the joke. But I have four little kids. So um, I shouldn't say little. Thomas, my Thomas is 11. He's like up to here now. Mm -hmm. I'm short, so it doesn't, you know, <laughs> everyone just wants to pass up Sarah. So, um, and then my son Fulton is 10. And then we have a little girl named Catherine who's six. And then our baby is Colby Joseph. He's two. So, uh, so it's just been wonderful to get to be a part of the Benedictine community where I do a lot of ministry there uh, and then all over the world. But really, like you said, drama is in every family yeah, and every mm -hmm. part of our life. Yeah. And everyone says drama free. I always say that's the goal, right? I mean, right. we know it's like eliminating <laughs> might be hard, Usually but minimizing. Usually every family has the a drama word. queen, right? <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> and that's what I always say. Working with, uh, I do a lot of work with teens and young adults and, um, and even out of college and, and beyond. And that's been the really, the neat thing about this ministry is just 
just how it affects so many people because every single one of us is in a relationship of some type. Mm -hmm. And that's why the, you know, the subtitle of the book is A Guide to Drama-Free Relationships, not just dating relationships, no. but with your family, with your friends, with, you know, maybe your significant other in your marriage. Yeah. So it's very all-encompassing. So. Well, what led you into this whole area of, I mean, you come from a big family, right? Yeah. But into this whole area of drama, too much drama in relationships. Sure. And what led you to say, hey, we need to address this, or maybe in your own life, your family, right. or what led you into this whole area of building relationships on a sound foundation? Right. It's a great question. So I have all brothers, so I don't have any sisters. Um, and so when I went to college, that was really eye-opening to me, mm -hmm. even just the drama in my own with experience girls. in college mm -hmm. with women. Yeah. And, you know, and then also the catalyst for my ministry was really, I was asked to be a RD, a dorm director mm -hmm. at Benedictine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So my very, one of my very first jobs out of college was my husband was teaching at Benedictine um, and we had two little boys. My boys were under two. So but as a lot of moms out there know, when you have young ch ch you know, children, you're busy diapers, mm -hmm. dishes, all this stuff, laundry. But there's also like a lot of, you know, your mind is very sometimes kind of free. Mm -hmm. And so when I was doing my ministry with the, as an RD, I would take care of, I had 142 freshman college women. Wow. So, and we lived in the dorms for three years. Mm -hmm. And so I really got a front row seat to what it was like to be kind of a transition from high school to college. And I know a lot of people will say, oh, it's just for women, right? And I always say, you know, where there are 142 mm -hmm. women, there's at mm -hmm. least 142 men, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, and that, I really got a lot of feedback from the men. And yeah. the very first year I was in the dorms was the year that Facebook came out. Yeah. Um, and so I always tell people, I went through junior high, high school, college, got engaged, got married, had mm -hmm. kids before I even knew what social media was. Mm -hmm. And I always say I'm 34, you know, not 84, because, you know, the teenagers look at me like, what? How old are you? Yeah. And so, but I missed it by like a yeah. year. Mm -hmm. And I just, you know, I look back and I always say, I'll do anything to help because I can't imagine how hard it is to go through those teen years and young adult years right now mm -hmm. with a phone. Yeah. And, um, and I know how much I struggled with insecurities and anxieties and you know like the competition and the perfectionism that it is just to go through those times mm -hmm. and in all through life you don't get to graduate yeah. from right it. so um so I really started doing ministry on just the I want to help I'll do anything I can help I have all these little kids and crazy yeah. life but I can stroll my babies and chat and mm -hmm. hang out mm -hmm. um, and then one night some girl said you need to give, get up and give a talk about this and I was like what's this? And they say, what you talk about? Mm. I said, what do I talk about? Yeah. And they're like, we don't even know what to call it, but it's what you talk about. Mm. Um, and so really it just became this whole idea. And I gave a talk at Benedictine. I was hoping that like 10 people would show up. These 10 people that kept telling me, cause I'm not a public speaker. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I showed up to the, the auditorium that night and there were over 300 women waiting for me in the auditorium. And mm. I said, we're on to something. Mm. So well, you're, something's you're, going on. You're yeah. at a Catholic sure. educational institution. Right. Yeah. Um, so, you know, my guess is maybe even better than most homes these young people are coming from. Yeah. Yet you're dealing with, I mean, w what a time from high school to college, even yeah. though it's Catholic, sure. um, still drama, still yeah. a lot of emotion, still a lot of unanchoredness going on. What, what were you seeing? What are the causes of this? Uh, what were the relationships looking like? Yeah, no, it's a great question. What What's really hard, and I think as I, I've been doing ministry for six or seven years now, and the question that I keep coming back to is, I hear so many emails after my talks, you know, talking just with friends, being at Benedictine, wherever I am, like you said, whether it's Catholic or yeah. I give talks at sororities and fraternities for focus, mm -hmm. like Newman mm -hmm. like Newman Centers, yeah, I mean, all perfect. over. Um, I've been to Australia and the Philippines, and wow. you know, you, you, you kind of get everyone's different cultural vibe. Mm -hmm. But the two questions that I think as human beings, especially as young adults and, and teenagers that you're always kind of asking yourself is, am I enough and am, mm. am I ever going to be truly loved? Right. Wow. And I think that, Say those two again. Am, am I enough and am I ever going to be truly loved? And I know that those two questions, even in my own life, you know, I think the devil really likes to work on our I think insecurities. You got people, mm -hmm. I think you got and people 60, 70, 80 still asking yeah, that question. I mean, oh, sure. like I said, you don't get to graduate from it, you know? And so, you know, when I say drama, I, I don't always mean drama, meaning, you know, just mm -hmm. like, oh, like silly cat fights. You know, mm -hmm. that's not really what I mean. I think what I mean by that is, just that longing in our hearts to know and to believe that we're truly enough and that we're truly wow. going to be loved. And mm -hmm. when I watch social media and texting enter the scene, 
I remember, you know, I was 24, you know, 23, newly married, little kids, but I wasn't so far removed from that life to, to wonder, man, what is this doing to their self-worth and to their confidence mm -hmm. and the men and the women? Oh, yeah. Because I think a lot of times people think, oh, this is just a female thing. We're talking mm -hmm. relationships. We're talking emotions. And the outcry from the men, like when I gave that talk to over 300 women on campus, the very next day, I had a group of guys come up to me and say, you gave a talk on like relationships and you didn't invite us, mm -hmm. you know, like, and it became very evident to me very quickly. Even when I went, when I was on Life on the Rock, you know, we were talking about things and I got a lot of email from men that were saying, I struggle with a lot of mm -hmm. the things that you're talking about. And what is it? You know, it's insecurity, self-worth, you know, like wh who am I, you know, how do I build myself up? How do I grow in confidence? What does that look like in a social media world where you're constantly being evaluated, that, that competition, that perfectionism? And one, you know, a lot of people will tell me, that feedback on social media can be devastating. You mm -hmm. know, it used to be back in the day, someone would pass a nasty note about you or someone would say something about you in the, right. you know, in the locker room and it's like, not the whole world knew, mm -hmm. you know? And with Snapchat and just some of the different things that are going on, it's really hard, I think, to, to see, am I enough and am I gonna be truly loved at all stages of my life? How do we answer that? Right. That's where a lot of the ministry was born. And really, only in life, the only place that answer, I know in my life, even in marriage, mm -hmm. And being a mom, yeah. Um, and as you go through all those transitions, really, the only place that I'm going to be satisfied is at the feet of Jesus. Yeah. And yeah. you know, I we were praying over our grandchildren, cooking breakfast and waffles and everything. <laughs> and every time we pray, you know, I bless them and say, Jesus, let them know for the purpose to which they were born, yeah. so yeah. that they're not going to go on this storm of life where they're being tossed to and fro because right. they don't know who they are. Right. So ultimately, the great place for all this cultivation is home. Right. Yeah. But sometimes we have broken families, we have parents who aren't emotionally secure in and of themselves. So how, how as parents or even grandparents, how, you know, if they're not well and stable, right. they can't give what they don't have. Right. I think that that was uh, one of the things that really overwhelmed me when I was doing ministry. I, I give a lot of um, parish talks. I do a lot, of, a lot of all school assemblies. So a lot of times I'll have the teenagers and the young adults in the front, and mm -hmm. then I will have rows of parents and teachers and, and whatnot in the back. And one of the things that was so just um, overwhelming for me was just as I was doing ministry and even after I wrote the book, I really thought that I was kind of looking at that 13 to 30, 35 age. Um, and then after the book came out and as I st you know, started speaking a little more and got into these parishes, the outcry from the parents mm -hmm. that came to mm -hmm. me and said, just what you're talking about. I know you weren't talking to me, but you were talking to me. Mm -hmm. And it's because virtue is really something that's lost on a lot of us. I remember mm -hmm. in college, um, part of my conversion was through Dr. Ted Shree, who I know is mm -hmm. a really good friend mm -hmm. of EWTN's as well. And um, my senior seminar mm -hmm. was on uh, the, it's on the book, Love and Responsibility by St. John Paul mm -hmm. II. And um, it went on to become his book, Men, Women, and the Mystery of Love by Dr. Right. Shree. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the things that really struck me in college was just this idea of, you know, what does this look like in all stages of life? Because even after you get married or after you, you know, are in your vocation, your spouse cannot be your God. Mm -hmm. And that was something that, you know, when I say that, when, when, when I say from stage, you know, it's actually when my conversion story, a lot of it had to do with a confession experience I had in the confessional with a priest. And the best dating advice I ever received was from this priest in a confessional. So when people tell you priests don't know what's up with relationships, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. just drop kick, you know, mm -hmm, silence them, mm -hmm. right? So, and this priest said to me, he said, Sarah, I want you to run to our Lord and I want you to build a box. And I want you to take everything you're struggling with and I want you to put it at the feet of someone who can actually do something about it. Mm -hmm. And I want you to fall into our Lord's arms and I want you to let him love you like no human man can. Right. Because you keep trying to make all these men into your God mm -hmm. and you are always gonna be disappointed because they, and you're always gonna crush them under the weight of that pressure because no man can be your God. Mm -hmm. and he, he looked at me and I'll never forget it. He said, Sarah, you don't need a savior. You already have one. Right. And it changed my life because mm -hmm. it totally reoriented, it untwisted what I had seen as what men were in my life. What, what were they? They were supposed to be filling me up emotionally, mm -hmm. gratifying me, making me feel my worth. You know, I struggled with that so much in high school. And, and so then whenever, after I had that experience uh, and he said, run to our Lord, fall into his arms and then run with him mm -hmm. and run with our Lord. Don't look in any other direction. And when you feel like the time's right, glance to the side and see who's running with you. And maybe that's who you're supposed to be with, mm -hmm. you know? And it really reoriented my idea okay. of, you know, Father Jacques Philippe Cox talks about the re-education of your soul. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I think we need like a re-education of our emotions and of our passions and of our feelings. And 
Um, just that idea of, I can't take a person and make them my everything, and I can't take a person and make them my savior because that's not their job. Mm -hmm. And he looked at me, and this priest said, let men be men and let God be God. There you go. And it just changed my life. And mm -hmm. a lot of that idea of, who am I? Mm -hmm. You know, someone asked me one time, Sarah, when that special guy comes along and falls in love with you, who's he going to be falling in love with? Do you know who you are? Mm -hmm. So I try to take that focus of we're all out, you know, a lot of young adults are out looking for the person that's going to be perfect for them and complete them. And it's like, no, no, no. Like, I want you to figure out who you are mm -hmm. and who you are in Christ and your identity as a, a beloved daughter of God or a beloved son of God, mm -hmm. because that's a full-time job in itself. Right. <laughs> right. Well, and, and it's, and it's um, because on the course of the day, if you're looking to social media and how many likes you have and dislikes you have, if you don't know who you are, you are being tossed to and fro. Right. And it's like, they like me, they don't like me. I mean, really? Yeah. God loves you, right. you know? And yep. that's your anchor, that's where you have to be really established in. Right. And, but, it, but it happens to us because very difficult, yeah. relationships change, people change, mm -hmm. but He is constant, yeah. you know? Absolutely. And that's where we really have to establish ourselves again and again and again and again. Oh yeah, it's a daily struggle. Mm -hmm. You know, I always say the devil loves to twist, divide, and isolate. Mm -hmm. He twists the truth about ourselves, about our identity in, in Christ, about who we are, so that he can divide us out. Think drama. Mm -hmm. Drama yeah. with women and oh, women, sure. drama with men and men, drama yeah. with women and men, so that he can isolate you. Mm -hmm. And then he, you're more easy to pick off. You're more mm -hmm. easily picked yeah. off. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I, with my ministry, I see a lot of isolation right now. I see a lot of loneliness. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of sadness. I see a lot of people who come to me in, in tears, men and women who are just like, I want what you're talking about, but I don't have any friends. I don't have anyone to run with. I, I want what you are talking about, but how do I do that? And mm -hmm. that's where a lot of, you know, the virtue in my ministry comes in is it's a relationships ministry and a lot of that begins with friendship mm -hmm. and what that looks like. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, I keep trying to go to your terms, emotional virtue. When I first heard it, I was thinking, well, she must mean something negative here because if our virtues are based on emotions, that, that must be she must be going negative on that. Yet I hear you saying and, and what I've read is that you have to apply virtue to emotions because right. God's concerned about our emotions and our emotions are always there. What's their proper place? How are they governed? Right. And I'm thinking, you know, about young people going off to college now. You know, they'll right. be getting ready to go and, you know, we have some in our family and, and you know, they may know right from wrong. We've taught them right from wrong. Sure. And then some of the theology of the body, which is just so important that the body's speaking a language and are you telling the truth or are you lying with your body? But yet this emotion, I think, is a very important component because you could have those two down and they're, they're so important. Right. But yet these emotions are you know, kind of, they could run our lives. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so continue to, to share sure. how, how that works you know, in, in encounters and in relationships that what's the proper place of emotions? How are they governed you yeah, know, by absolutely. God and, and, and our will? You know, what's the place of emotions and will? How do yeah. they compare? Yep. It's so, it's such a loaded question. It's so funny when people ask me what I do, you know, what I do and what the book's about. I'm like, do you have six hours? Right. You know, because there is, it really took me 180 mm -hmm. pages to explain it. And, and to be honest, when I was, so when I was in um, Dr. Shree's class, there was a term that we threw around in class. And a lot of times we were talking about people understand chastity physically. Right. It's like, okay, I get it, right? right. Uh, you know, you don't, you know, get it. But there was kind of this other aspect that we kept going back to and people started calling it emotional chastity. And what it is basically is the, I always say it's kind of like the pregame, like the precursor mm -hmm. to, you know, it's like, okay, well, we know this is like when it goes all physical, we understand chastity, but what about this whole idea of what we're doing with our heart and mind and how we're preparing mm -hmm. our heart and mind for when relationships come? Mm -hmm. So the reason why I decided to call it, it, it's kind of emotional virtue is a play on words because emotional chastity, when you say that, a lot of times, especially young people will say, oh, chastity, chastity is abstinence. Oh, okay, so you want emotional abstinence. You want me to ha not have emotions. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. That's actually not, is not at all what I want you to do. Because people don't think chastity, they think it's just abstinence. Right? So then when you tell people, no, there's chastity in mm -hmm. marriage, they're like, slow down. We ha I, this is another four hour talk, right? right? So what I decided to do is call it emotional virtue. Because really, I mean, virtue, St. Thomas Aquinas would say, is the habitual disposition to do good, mm -hmm. right? Virtue is where you choose excellence, you choose greatness, you know, you, you're not dominated by your emotions and passions but you have the freedom to love. Mm -hmm. And when I say these things, you know, again, if you're a young person, you're like, 
talk slow. You know, like I, I've never heard these terms before. Right. So what I always say is I'm a huge Dave Ramsey fan, you know, and, and he always says, if you don't control your money, your money will control you. And I was laughing one time because I was like, that's how your emotions are. If mm -hmm. you don't harness and train your, train your emotions, they will control you. Right. Let's pause. Yeah, I, sure. I want to tell you, I just really got it. Okay. <laughs> I, I did. That was so helpful. I hope okay, other people good. get I, I Well, we can go even deeper. I got yeah, emotional virtue. Great, so. so we're going to take a break at this point. We'll be back. Plenty more to come. We want to hear from you. Give us a call. Write us an email. Emotional Virtue Ministries and the book, A Guide to Drama-Free Relationships. We'll be right back. Please don't go away. Welcome back. Well, remember that we want you to be a part of our show. So if you have a question for Sarah, we want you to give us a jingle at our live broadcast. You can talk to Sarah right here on the air at 1-800-221-9460. If you're calling and you're outside North America, you can reach us at area code 205-271-2980. And you can always send us an email, jimandjoy at ewtn.com. And hopefully we will use your question or your comment right here on the air. I'm in a beautiful conversation. The book is called Emotional Virtues Ministries. That's her ministry. The book title is Emotional Virtue, A Guide to Drama-Free Relationships. You can go straight to her website, emotionalvirtue.com. Maybe you're doing a, a ministry with teenagers, high schoolers, junior high, college ministry focus, and you're thinking, yeah. I need this yeah. resource. That's the great place to And you to know get what? It. It's for everybody. Mm -hmm. It's so clear. And you were sharing right before break, you were helping us, me in particular, to understand what do you mean by emotional virtue? And really, I got it. Yeah. Especially when you linked it up with chastity, mm -hmm. and that we usually associate chastity with just the physical aspects, but you're saying you need emotional mm -hmm. chastity, a proper integration of your emotions within the wholeness of your being and under the authority of God. Everybody needs that at mm -hmm. every moment of right. their lives. Um, it's yeah, critical. no, and like I said, it's the six hour answer. I mean, it, it could go, our church is so rich and so beautiful. And I actually, um, my husband studied under, um, we call him Father Bob, but you probably know him as Bishop Barron, uh, mm -hmm. when my husband got his doctorate. And so we would have Father Bob over. And one time he was talking, we were kind of on a conversation like this. And um, he ended up writing a blog, and I stole a quote from him. And mm -hmm. it's really one of the hinges of my ministry. Okay. And he, he pulls from St. Thomas Aquinas and from you know all my heroes, you know, mm -hmm. you know John Paul II and Fulton Sheen. And he just pulled a couple people together and said, is love just an emotion? Is love just an, a feeling? And he says in this quote, he says, love isn't just an emotion or a feeling, but it can be accompanied by emotion or feeling. Mm -hmm. That's the confusion of our time, confusing love's, like, love's feeling with love itself. Mm -hmm. And he goes on to say, love is a great act of the will. It's when I say, I desire your good, not for my sake, but for yours. Mm -hmm. And that, I mean, it just... It opened up, kind of just opened up my entire understanding of just this idea of what does our world tell us? Take, get what you can, use people, mm -hmm. use people for your good, especially your emotional good, because mm -hmm. it's like life is about filling some, you know, filling myself mm -hmm. up. And when I run dry, when I, you know, you go back for more or mm -hmm. you choose someone else or, you know. And so when I started linking the idea of is love just an emotion or is it a great act of the will? I tell young people all the time, being married 12 years myself with four kids. It, love isn't what will you do for me. Mm -hmm. Love is sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Love is, I mean, that was really, and to have a young person step back and say, whoa, love isn't what will you do for me, right. but love is what won't you do for me, right. or what, what won't you do so that you put what's right. best for me mm -hmm. in front of that. Right. And so when I talk about emotional virtue, and I always say, you know, when you, when you have, I, I loved it, I, this was something so hard for me in high school and, and in college, when you feel anxious, or you feel jealous, or you feel tempted, or you feel angry, or whatever it is you feel, you don't necessarily choose that. Mm -hmm. You're just welcome to being a human being. It's just gonna come hit you in the right. face, you know? And right. sometimes it's like, where did that come from, mm -hmm. right? And so I always tell people, you have two choices. The first choice you have is, how am I gonna act or react to this, mm -hmm. AKA virtue? How am I gonna act or react to this? The other choice you have is, 
how am I preparing my heart and my mind to take this on? Mm -hmm. What am I filling my head with? What am I watching? What am I listening to? Who am I watching and listening to? Who do I let into my life? What lies and what truths do mm -hmm. I let into my life? You know, I kind of call it like the pregame. That's emotional virtue. You're forming your emotions and your heart and your mind and you're forming yourself at all stages of life to be able to take on mm -hmm. what is being a human being. And sometimes it's, it's, it's the, bad, the good, the bad, and the ugly, right? And so trying to get them to understand, trying to get myself to understand, going after the true, the good, and the beautiful and surrounding yourself with mm -hmm. that, whether it's your relationship with Christ, whether it's virtue. I go through in the book, I, I list out all these <coughs> virtues because a lot of people are like, I know everything that I don't want. I know everything I, I'm supposed to say no to, but what am I actually supposed to be saying yes to right, right now? Right. I remember feeling that. You know, you're like, mm -hmm. okay, don't do this, don't do that. Right. Well, I, I have so many wounds, I'm never doing that. Mm -hmm. I'm never. I'm just never gonna feel again. That mm -hmm. just sounds easier. Right. Or I'm just gonna let my emotions completely run the show because it's more comfortable, more fun. But, but really looking at emotional virtue and saying, no, like if I'm not in control of this and if I don't be the boss of my thoughts and rein this in mm -hmm. and let the Lord be the guide of my life and not my fleeting emotions. Sure. Because it's so easy. Mm -hmm. It is so easy. And like I said, I, I really, I look at the young people, I look at high schoolers and college students and young adults and, and people especially that are discerning their vocation and I just say, how can I help you? This mm -hmm. is so hard. This right. is just so hard. So and I'm, so that's many people though are just, it's kind of like, well, that's what I felt like doing. And that's like their excuse. As if that's, or we used to tell our children, you know what? Feelings lie. You need to know that. And you need to hold every thought, every feeling captive to the mind of Christ. That's why we're supposed to have put on our helmet of salvation to say, is that real? Is anything good going to come out of this if I say this? If I, because I feel like I have the right to say this, or like you said, I'm just an emotional mess because I'm just being led by all my feelings, you right. know? And there's nothing anchored. Sure. Well, and that's what one of the things, one of the chapters in there is um, called like finding your squad, finding mm -hmm. your crew, finding your tribe. Uh, that's a really big thing right now is um, just. Who do you run with? Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I ask that of a lot of people. You know, I say, show me your, your five closest friends and, and I'll show you your future. Or, you know, another quote I love is, you know, you become like the five people you spend the most time with. Mm -hmm. Choose carefully. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's so powerful because mm -hmm. I think even in my own life, you know, toxic people that tell you things that just are not true or toxic ideas that mm -hmm. come into your head. And man, it's amazing how something that a ex-boyfriend says or something that a group of mean girls say or something that a, a girl says about you, um, you know, as a man, mm -hmm. it's just how that sticks with you. I was bullied so bad in junior high, I had to switch schools. And I used to look back on that experience and I just would question like, why did that happen? Mm -hmm. And then you fast forward 20 years and I do a ministry for right, young women right. and young men. And it's like, Lord, you are funny. Mm -hmm. You know, like you get it, you get yeah. what we need. Cause one of the things my mom told me um, during that time was she put her hands on my shoulder and she said, Sarah, hurt people hurt people. That's right. And sometimes mm -hmm. hurt people even hurt themselves. Mm -hmm. And and that was just truth, straight mm -hmm. up truth. And so when I look at someone, or I, even in my growing up, you know, you just, man, they, what is hurting inside of them mm -hmm. that's causing them to either lash out or to, to attack me or something's hurting so deeply inside of them that they're hurting themselves. Mm -hmm. Joy, let's, let's we have an email that says, okay. my boyfriend and I have been dating for several years and I have a very close friend of many years that I can confide in. He has a lot of friends, but no one especially close. He says men are not built that way and he always has me. Do men need to have close relationships with other men or do they just get it alone? And this is Kelly oh, yeah. from Nova, Michigan. Oh, Kelly, that was an <laughs> awesome question. Um, okay, this is really dear to my heart because a lot of times people will see the book. I always joke that I have, I do have boys on the mm -hmm. cover of the mm -hmm. book because people think relationships, it's like, oh, that's like the girl thing, right? That's mm -hmm. like the, the woman, you know, oh yeah, yeah. It is unbelievable how many men I get that come to me and say, every your book everything mm -hmm. like form me tell me like i want to be a leader i want to be the man in this relationship i want to you know be a, a leader for my girlfriend my fiance mm -hmm. my wife but i have no idea how to do this and her question is so important because in our society male friendship is so poorly shown mm -hmm. if you think about just like guys being good friends there's hardly any examples i mean i always say lord of the rings is like the best example mm -hmm. of like male friendship so my my plea to kelly for her awesome boyfriend is you have to have, he has to be built up by a group of men. And here's why. Sometimes, like especially people who aren't dating yet, you know, a lot of times what will happen is, is a girl and a guy will, a girl will see a guy and be like, oh yeah, 
I, I won't, you know, there's potential there, right? Mm -hmm. But what happens a lot of times, if, if that guy doesn't have a group of solid men or a relationship with Christ, he will fall in love with the girl for her relationship in Christ mm -hmm. and for her friends and for that. And it's really hard for him to ever kind of understand what it means to not only, you know, have a relationship with Christ as a man, but what does that look like? That's mm -hmm. what your male friends show you. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, is dating couples, you know, I always say if you're dating someone right now or you will, whoever, if you will date someone in the future, that relationship is going to end in two ways. You are either going to get married or you're going to break up. And I wrote over 70 pages in mm -hmm. there on like, how do you go from a, from hey to I do beginning with the end in mind? Mm -hmm. So Kelly and her awesome boyfriend, like they might be called to marriage, but what if you're not? And, mm -hmm. and if you do go on and if it doesn't work out, you want to make sure that your awesome boyfriend is able to go back to a group of strong men, go back to his faith, because a lot of times relationships are built so much on just one another mm -hmm. that if it does, if something does go wrong and it's not meant to be, how, what happens from there on out? Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is, is it's just so important to have like-minded men and like-minded women to mm -hmm. run with you. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes, you know, I mean, being married 12 years, you know, sometimes you just go to your sister-in-law and be like, how's it going? You go mm -hmm. to your friends and say, mm -hmm. you know, you, th there's no way that um, like the, the opposite sex is gonna understand everything right. about you. Right. And so right. I think our Lord would say, there's richness in having friends like men of having both good, sexes. Oh my gosh, oh, yeah. Really there's just is. richness there. Yeah. And there's things that you can add to value in your life, and yeah. especially your relationship with Christ. Um, and the looks thing different. with unhealthy relationships is when one person is established and secure, and the other person is tapping and drawing. And, right. you know, that gets old because right. it's so one sided. It's like, right. I really care about right. you, but you're just like literally sucking the life out of me. Right. And that can happen with a girlfriend, too. Right. Well, and like the line in there that, that makes me you know, cautious or nervous is, Kelly, I'll always have you. Mm -hmm. That's just... That's a lot. That's a lot. And that's mm -hmm. a lot on Kelly. It's a lot. It's heavy on Kelly, you mm -hmm. know? And um, and again, she can't be his everything. Right. Because that's that's kind of how, again, mm -hmm. no one can be your God. They just, it's, you're going to break them. And you're going to crush them under the weight of that. And you'll always end up disappointed because people can't be your God. Mm -hmm. Am I enough? That's key to, to, to bring resolution to that within yourself. You know, am, am I enough before God? Am I beautiful before God? You know, his divine affirming love within me. It doesn't mean that you don't need others, right. that you don't need a mate, but you want a mate and you want others that can affirm, you know, the essence of your being and what you believe. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I'm not going to sell out right. because I'm feeling some emotions in this if the values you are espousing aren't my values. If you want me in ways that I can't give myself mm -hmm. before we make a true holistic commitment called marriage. Right. So you, you settle that um, and I guess then if that's beautiful within you, you know what you're looking for, you've got friends around you, you're meeting that in the sacrament, then you know when someone is proposing something different. Right. That, that it's not as beautiful. But you've got to know the difference between what's Authentic. The levels of, of beauty mm -hmm. so that you can say that's not beautiful enough for me. I don't know if you would say that, but it's kind of like, no, that doesn't, that doesn't, that doesn't move my passions. That doesn't move mm -hmm. my emotions. Right. I have virtuous emotions mm -hmm. and this is out of sync. Right. That's the way it has to work in the real encounter at the moment when you might be tempted. Right. The master of all of this, I'm, I just said, well, I mean, our Lord, but St. John Paul II just kills this. Mm -hmm. I mean, he really does. And it's a part, theology of the body and, and just what it is. I mean, you talk about needing a whole lifetime to unpack it. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorite things about, I mean, he is my hero. And I just, my husband and I just look up to him so much. But his, he calls it the gift of accompaniment. Mm -hmm. and, and I really have prayed over this so many times. And that's really what I feel like my ministry is, is I want to accompany you. I want to be with you. I mean, so many young people, especially, and adults, I hug a lot of, of moms and mm -hmm. dads that are very, very lonely mm -hmm. and really struggling with just the complicated, just life is messy. It's really complicated sometimes. And that idea of the gift of accompaniment, yeah. that idea of, I want to run with you towards virtue. One of the hardest things about it is that when you find a true friend, when you really know it's authentic, mm -hmm. you said it, mm -hmm. two key components that have to be there are vulnerability and mm -hmm. commitment. Mm -hmm. And what are the two things that human beings struggle with the most? vulnerability and commitment, right. what is the thing that the social media world mm. of our teens really struggle with is vulnerability right. and commitment. They would rather, 
I mean, eat their arm off than have a picture or something posted oh, of yeah, them. That's that's not I don't look good. That's perfect. not my side. Yeah. It's not. Well, uh, and I think everybody struggles with it a little mm -hmm. bit. It's like, why would we all put our worst side mm -hmm. up? You know what I mean? And one of my favorite quotes is um, the reason why so many people are insecure is because we compare our behind the scenes with everyone else's highlight reel. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, social media really is a highlight mm -hmm. reel. And you sit there in your own normal life and it's like, this is not that highlight yes. reel. Mm -hmm. And um, my husband and I actually led a pilgrimage to Poland last year and we did the life of John Paul II. And we're actually going to do another pilgrimage this holy uh, over holy week we're doing Poland mm -hmm. and Rome and one of the things that just comes to me with John Paul II over and over again is that gift of be authentically you yeah. be all you mm -hmm. but have Christ at the center of your life and let virtue just completely yes. come out that that joy and peace that the world cannot give mm -hmm. it is a magnet and it's a magnet with friendships I mean mm -hmm. it's a magnet with people and he had it yeah. and he was so good at teaching how to give that to others mm -hmm. and so it's always an invitation with him and with me it's always an invitation like I want to invite you in to be truly you yeah. and be all you but then when you infuse it with virtue and you right. infuse it with a life with Christ yeah. It's just a game changer. It'll change mm -hmm. every aspect of your life. Mm -hmm. Well, we have That's another right. email. It says, I see too many young people, and older ones for that matter, constantly texting with no real contact or interaction. How can someone start a relationship if they can't even speak face to face, like we said, <laughs> face to face? <laughs> and this is Emily from Amherst, Nova Scotia. Oh my gosh, I love Nova Scotia. We did a Steubenville up there, it's mm -hmm. beautiful. Um, thank you, Emily, for your question. Yeah, I'm worried about it too. I think mm -hmm. that um, one of the things that, that really makes me worried is I was actually in California doing a conference one time and after my talks, I always stand at my table and I take questions right. for mm -hmm. hours. And this one time this girl came up to me and she like had a question and we were talking and then I was just listening and she, it was a really heavy question and then she just started crying. Mm -hmm. And I just, I hugged her and I just said, are these good tears? Are they, you know, what, what kind mm -hmm. you know, what are we working with here? You know, it's kind of like the tears. Sure. And she just pulled back from me and she goes, I just have never had anyone look me in the eye this long and I'm just really overwhelmed mm. right now. And it was just that awareness in me that was like, wow, you know, and, and it was funny. <laughs> uh, I started my ministry about six years ago and when I first started my ministry, I had all these parents coming to me that were like, my teens are always on their phone. I can't mm. get them to put it down. I feel like they're not really present. And in the last two or three years, it's been a shift. And now I have teens come to me all the time mm. and say, my parents are always on their phone. Mm -hmm. Like they never listen to me. Like I feel like they're not paying attention to me. Mm -hmm. And it's heartbreaking because I know that what happened is, is the teens were on their phones and all the parents didn't have phones and they were right. all just kind of like, okay, family mm -hmm. board game. Right. I'm playing it by myself. I'm right. watching this movie by myself. Mm -hmm. And I think they jumped on social media and they jumped on, you know, started playing Candy Crush mm -hmm. and started, you know, being on Snapchat they too. They did the crazy train too. <laughs> well, and it's, but the phones are a part mm -hmm. of our life. They're mm -hmm. not going anywhere. Social media is not going anywhere. It's only going to get more advanced. And so part of my ministry and part of, of the book is how do we apply virtue mm -hmm. to social media? How do we apply, you know, virtue in our Lord? How do we infuse yeah. our life of our social interactions? Mm -hmm. And one of the best gifts we can give people is, I mean, I truly think one of the best gifts you can give someone right now is to take your phone and to turn it upside down and mm -hmm. to push it away and mm -hmm. to just be like, I want to be present to you right, right now. Mm -hmm. um, and it's very difficult, I think, for the younger crowd because their main way of interacting is, it's, right. it's very Snapchat, Instagram, you know, texting mm -hmm. and being able to like allow like, okay, what is healthy? You know, but also what's addiction? Mm -hmm. So I have a lot of teens that are like, I'm addicted to my phone. Mm -hmm. Like I know I am. I don't know what am I supposed but to do. But it's designed though? to make you addicted, well, so that even yeah. when you put it down, every five to six minutes, you need to pick it back up. Right. I mean, it because it needs to feed. Something. I was doing some research, and that's where you need to. I mean, scientifically, that's yeah. happening to well, you. Well, they were saying, yeah, there's a lot of good science yeah. coming out. But one of the things, one of the overwhelming stats that I read about when I was planning a talk called "Elevate Social Media" for mm -hmm. for Steubenville Conference, um, the average adult looks at their phone like 26 times a. Day, mm -hmm. the average teenager looks at their phone like something like 59 times mm -hmm. a day um, and so I mean these again who knows what they are all the time everyone's different but I think just really the question that I think I have for for all of us is the, the best gift you can give someone is the gift of your presence mm -hmm. and your availability and I just think that that is seen right now as one of the highest compliments you can pay mm -hmm. someone is to say I, you know, I, I, watching people like text or do mm -hmm. stuff at dinner when you're mm -hmm. on a date I watch couples like on a date or something you mm -hmm. know and it's like 
wow, like, can you imagine, you know, what a person would feel to just be totally invested mm -hmm. in, you know, and, mm -hmm. and it's a, for all of us, we all have to take oh, that sure. mental, that mm -hmm. mental, you know, okay, I'm on my phone yeah. too much, you know, mm -hmm. and addiction is real. And so I, I really just encourage people, know thyself. And so um, a couple of things I have in, in my book, there's a couple of challenges. Like one is um, some girls actually set timers for themselves. Right. So they say like, I'm on for 30 minutes. And mm -hmm. when the timer goes off on my phone, I'm putting it's it away. Mm -hmm. And they tell me it's really fruitful because when they go to it, they're like, I have 30 minutes. I'm right. not going to get lost in the weeds because mm -hmm. these are my 30 minutes where I'm going to like mm -hmm. talk to the people I want to talk to, do what I want to do. So I'm um, just not letting it control you, mm -hmm. but really having harnessing and training that phone to be something that you control. And you, you one thing that really bothers me though is most people go to their phones to feel affirmed mm -hmm. and satisfied. Mm -hmm. And very often we walk away feeling neither. Right. And when I say that during yeah. my talks, I just see everyone's eyes go, Oh, she's yeah, right. Like you real. go to your phone yeah, and then right. you leave it and you go, ew, mm -hmm. I did, that didn't help. That wasn't helpful. Let's yeah. pause right there. We're going to carry you over to the final segment. Okay, great. And we'll be right back. Plenty more to come. Emotional virtue, a guide to drama free relationships. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Well, you're an important part of our EWTN family, and you know, we would love for you to come and join us live right here on At Home. And you could be a member of our studio audience. All you need to do is contact the EWTN Pilgrimage Department. You might be thinking in the new year, I want to make a pilgrimage to EWTN. Just give, send them an email, pilgrimages at EWTN.com. Give them a jingle at 205-271-2966 and make that happen. Well, right now we're going to go straight to Rome to hear from Joan. Joan, what do you have for us today? Well, greetings to all of you at home from a very windy, very cold Rome. It's Christmas season about. It's actually going to be Advent in a few days. And behind me, I'm sure you can see they are preparing the beautiful Christmas tree from Poland in St. Peter's Square. Now, I'm sure most of you know, uh, getting to today's news, that the Holy Father left the Apostolic Palace last night for his 21st foreign apostolic trip. He's going to Myanmar and then to Bangladesh. And this is a journey that's been prepared a long time. First one to the country um, of Myanmar, by the way, a nation formerly known as Burma. And this for half a century was under a very despotic military rule until elections were held in 2015. And those were won by the National League for Democracy. Now, Cardinal Charles Bo of Yangon, he told Vatican Radio in an interview that the country's ruling party was generally made up always in the past exclusively of Burmese Buddhists and he said now the party includes other ethnic groups and not only the Buddhists but also Christians and other religions and that's a very big progress but the Cardinal had a warning for the Holy Father he told him not to use the word the name Rohingya because he said it's a very contested term here the military, the government, and the public would not like him to use this. Now, the Rohingya are a persecuted and stateless Muslim people in Western Myanmar. But actually, Pope Francis has spoken of them. In fact, he denounced, quote, the persecution of our Rohingya brothers, who he said were, quote, being tortured and killed simply because they uphold their Muslim faith. Now. Cardinal Secretary of State Pietro Parolin said Pope Francis's trip will support the tiny Christian communities in each of these nations. He said there's 400,000 Catholics in Bangladesh out of a total population of 163 million, whereas in Myanmar there's about 700,000 Catholics out of a population of um, 53 million. Now, Vatican officials have tried to stress that the Pope is going to bring a message of reconciliation, peace, and forgiveness, but we do know the Pope has to be very careful as he treads the landmines of political, ethnic, and religious sensitivities. So let's pray for a safe trip and a diplomatic success for the Holy Father. Time's up here, so back to you at home. 
Joan, thank you so much for that update. We'll all be in prayer for our Holy Father as he travels. Well, Sarah, we got a couple of minutes left, and you're so rich with uh, understanding relationships, but what's on your heart for these last couple of minutes? Right, well, thank you. I don't pretend for a minute to think that I understand it all or you know, can even know it all. I sit at, I, give, I do a lot of parent talks, and I'll just, my first opening line is always, all my children are under 11, so I just want to sit at your feet and like <laughs> listen to you um, because it's just really, it was always on my heart <coughs> to just be there for the young people that I was ministering to. And I just really was overwhelmed by the fact that it's just so all encompassing. And so mm -hmm. I think that really a lot of people look at the book and go, oh, it's just for teenage girls. And it's yeah. like, no, I would really love for you to kind of take a second look because I really wrote it by, for men. Mm -hmm. And we were talking a little bit earlier, but there's just not a lot out there for guys. And mm -hmm. um, I joke that a lot of moms will tell me that they put a $20 bill on the last page and they like give it to their sons and mm -hmm. they say, read it. Right. There's discussion questions in the back of the book. I made it very easy. And they're like, okay, here we go. Son, if you read this yeah. and go to dinner with me and we can chat about it, you get the $20. Perfect. And yeah. mm -hmm. I've had so many mothers and fathers tell me that was the best 20 bucks, bucks I ever spent because mm -hmm. it gave us the same lingo and jargon to be able to talk and communicate. Because a lot of times, like you said, it's what is virtue, what is use, right. what is mm -hmm. what does it mean to like really know thyself, like you mm -hmm. said, what does it mean to be used? Yeah. Um, gosh, to be able to have the words to kind of say, page 25, yeah. like that's mm -hmm. what I'm struggling with mm -hmm. right now. It's almost, yeah. I always say blame me. It's kind of like I can be the facilitator of conversations that are just really hard to have. I have a lot of couples that read it together. I have a lot of engaged couples that look, there's a lot of questions in there about how do we take our relationship mm -hmm. to the next level? Um, I call it the natural progression of a relationship. Mm -hmm. Like how do you go through every single stage? Mm -hmm. um, and so if anyone's out there, again, kind of thinking, how do I give this to someone that needs it, but also you might want to read it before you hand it off. Right. Uh, and you know, I think, you it's, I think it's any relationship, any field of relationship, whether you're a teacher, you help you understand your students better. If right, you're yeah. a, a boss, help you understand your right. staff better. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a human condition right. and that we all need to be loved yes. and to know that we are loved for our dignity, our value, and our worth. Right, and I've done, um, so on my website at Emotional Virtue, the book is there. There's, um, they made one of my talks I gave at the Focus Conference. Um, I gave it to a bunch of students and they made it into a Lighthouse CD, so mm -hmm. that's available there too. There's information about our pilgrimage that we're doing this Holy Week to Poland and Rome. Mm -hmm. And then there's also, my husband is just a fantastic writer and he's done a lot of amazing things. Um, but on the website, there's also just a lot of quotes and mm -hmm. if you just wanna get a better feel for it, um, I tried to make it just easy to kind of see what exactly is this, define emotional virtue for me mm -hmm. so but I would love everyone to know that I'm praying for them this is we're in an interesting time and I think our Lord says how do we take the truths yeah. like the deep mm -hmm. truths of our faith and make it modern day Sarah and so that's thank what I love you doing. so much thank for the you. gift that thanks you've for given having me I've loved job. meeting you guys yeah that's right I'm at, I'm at home with Jim and Joy from my own house it's fun <laughs> to be here with you guys you so thanks for having me thank you emotional virtue go to the website emotionalvirtue.com it's wonderful to be with you today all together we will build a new civilization of love and of true humanness. Thanks for your participation in this show. Keep it on EWTN. Bye now.